welcome to another Sonic Lab. Uh, if you haven't already seen, uh, Tom Lonsborough has been here and he's showing us some of the tips and tricks that he he's up to with his large Ableton live rig and uh, hardware setup because he plays live, but he's also an Ableton certified trainer uh, out of Manchester Midi School. Manchester Midi School, yep. And we're going to look at uh, some program change stuff uh, yeah. within the li in a live context, right? So it's not something you have to worry about as much, I suppose, when you're in the box, but um, you don't want to be changing all these settings live, so to speak, um, as you're trying to transition from one song to another, really helps if you can use make use of program changes. Um, so this accepts program change data, so does this. Uh, so does this actually, but I'm gonna do that in a slightly different way. So if we just take the, the Dave Smith to start with, as you see, we've got one, one sound there. Um, if I move down to a slightly different clip here, and just double click on it, um, now it's this section of the notes box of clip view that we're looking at, program change section. And yeah, it just lets me select a different patch. Um, so as soon as I trigger that, hopefully. Right, so you've got a, a program change going on there. Yeah. So um, that's an empty clip in this instance, but it doesn't have to be empty. It can have uh, MIDI notes in it or whatever. It just does the whole thing as one go. Yeah. I mean, MIDI clips only work for the individual channel and, uh, sorry, MIDI program changes in this context only work for the, the channel and the instrument that it's going out yeah, on. You can't correct. have multiple ones and stack them up and go, change everything with one button press on one track. No, but uh, I suppose if you had a, you know, a row of clips sending program changes out to multiple synths, you could trigger that using the scene launch button. So, right. you know, and you could group those, I suppose, in the same way that you were talking about before. Um, when we were right, so before. just have like a, a whole, yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. Um, and so you're using that in terms of, and, and, and I guess it throws it out ever so slightly before the first note so that you don't get any, uh, any funny business. Yeah, what you could do, um, it depends on which track we're looking to transition from to, but um, on the clip launch, uh, settings, quantization settings, instead of having that as global, which I've usually got set to a bar, we can actually turn that off or we can set it to a smaller value uh, so that, yeah, it triggers a split second before um, I need to be playing it. Um, obviously, though, if we've got some MIDI on there and I have it set at an odd quantization setting. Up, there's something funny going yeah, on. Yeah, and there's... It's but I, I guess that's the thing, because at some point you might be changing a track and, and playing a sequence part and yeah. then the next time you might want it to change to the sound that you're playing live on the keyboard exactly. or that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. So to cut a long story short, that's that's one way of doing things, just using the dedicated program change box down there. And a lot of synths will respond to that program change information. The other way that I've got of changing sounds uh, live is completely backwards. Um, like I said, the Mo can accept um, program changes. This is the uh, Minotaur, isn't it? But each of the knobs will respond to MIDI yeah. CC. You can get it to respond to program changes as oh, well. Oh, really? Okay. It's just so I've, you haven't done I've that. Not done it. I've not got around to it. Um, so yeah, what you'll see is if I just double click on one of the Mo clips, uh, there's MIDI information going on on there, MIDI notes and what have you. And then if we look to the envelopes section, you've got all your MIDI CCs here. Uh, so on live, anything that's got a little pink dot next to it um, means that it's following some sort of clip envelope automation. Um, yeah, so I've got a little crib sheet which tells me what each of these numbers means, but you tend so to So MIDI controller 15. Is the volume of uh, VCO 1, 16, the level of VCO 2. Ah, so what um, you're doing is you're putting in preset values on that clip to kind of set up the sound. Yeah. Preset way. values, and then if I just have a bit of a scroll through, you can see, is there any, let's have a look, let's go to 19. 19 is the cutoff. So when I trigger the next clip or scene, you can see the cutoffs at a slightly different level, and that's the cold starting point before he then sort of tweaks away from that. So, yeah. But then you're still able to... Still able to tweak it in real time. And it just and, um, brings him back to where your starting point is for each time you go around, don't Yeah, you? whenever you trigger the next scene, it'll just give you that fresh starting point. And again, this is all part of the creating the kind of jigsaw of what you want to happen with the computer assistance and what you want yeah. to leave to the mad panic and dash uh, of the live scenario. Because some people might want to have more live. Because I mean, it should also be mentioned that in your setup, 
you're not triggering any audio clips or, you know, there might be with the odd sample, few, but yeah. most of it is, is MIDI sequencing and, yeah. and, and, and sort of snare drum sequence and drum sequences rather than yeah. entire stems of sound, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, one reason for that is it keeps the CPU usage really low so right. you can, you know, have the buffer settings for the interface. I guess because if you're using, if you've got a low buffer and you're processing external inputs and you've got effects on those, you want to reserve the CPU to be able to yeah, exactly. deal with that rather yeah. than yeah, any other business. Yeah. Great. Well, that's program changes. Are there any other ways that it can be used or is it purely in the notes? I suppose you can insert them as raw MIDI data as well if you really wanted to get kind of tweaky with it, but that's getting a little bit harder to manage, yeah. right? Yeah, definitely. Okay, so yeah, just summing up quickly the two different ways that we've used them there. The first way is using the dedicated uh, program change box down here available in the notes section of clip view. Um, the other way we've used clip envelopes, uh, or sorry, the other way that we've sort of affected program changes as such is to use um, MIDI CC clip envelopes to allow us to sort of intimately program parameters, which you can then, you know, as soon as you trigger the next clip, you've got a whole new set of values for your CCs, and so it effectively changes the sound of the, the patch. So you could either have them on the active live tracks, or maybe, as you say, you yeah. can have a group track, which is just program changes yeah. and you clip you, you launch that clip and it just kind of goes that one that one that one and everything's kind of ready to go for the next song or the next section of the song that's right yeah great well that's it for this particular episode thank you very much for watching please do uh, stay tuned there are more coming tom see you next time thank you, Nick. see you later